Next up, on the Cosmic News Network, first contact with Joshua Putt. Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Welcome to First Contact Radio. Today is the 1st of June. Another change on the calendar, the Gregorian calendar, that is. Sun sign still same in Gemini. Our moon sign is making some transitions. Currently, it's in Aries. It's going to be moving to Taurus. It's only in Aries for a short while longer up until 10.42 a.m. when it goes void of course and then it will be in the void of course phase all day until 9.46 p.m. when it makes that transition into the next sign Taurus. So we're coming out of a fire sign. Remember uh, Aries is the card of the Emperor. He who sets in things in order so we've been dealing with this issue here the unconscious mind, the moon sign is our unconscious desire, so it's putting things in order, organizing them. You know, our moon our sun sign, Gemini, is all about the choices we're making as we're creating and doing things in the world and, and making our way through the world. So this is what's working together and now we're getting ready to go from a moon sign, which is a fire sign. Now we're gonna go to the earth. And that'll be coming up later tonight. Taurus. Taurus is reminding us it is the physical, but we need to hook the spiritual in with it. We can't forget that. And that's where we have that true connection that the Hierophant is referring to. Okay. The aspects we have for the day is we have a conjunction between the moon, Aries, and Uranus. Unexpected changes. Right over here. All in the areas of uh, Mars, Aries, which is organization, working together, creativity. It could also be warlike, very much warlike, something unexpected in the realm, leadership. So something going on in the world there. We'll find out what it is in just a couple of hours. Tonight we have a square between Neptune telling us we need to take a new perspective and Gemini choices the relationships we have. Looking at the choices and taking a new perspective on what we're making them, how we're making them, so on. And then finally 9.46 p.m. our sun sign, our moon sign moves into Taurus as I was just talking about momentarily. Moon phase. 17.1% to go till we be back down to the new moon. New moon occurs in just a few days on the 4th of June. That'll be this coming Saturday. Saturday night, 7.59 p.m. 24 Liar is the day on the Jewish calendar. 24 Liar, the daily thought for today is Moses inside. In each one of us glows a spark of Moses. He is our teacher. A teacher's job is to open a small window for the inner knowledge to pour down into the conscious mind. How do you awaken Moses? By awakening yourself. How do you awaken yourself? By sign finding someone in whom Moses is awake. Only the awakened can waken others. Dream Spell Oracle, it's the eight tone day. Yellow seed guided by the star. To be the yellow galactic seed. Phrases I harmonize in order to target modeling awareness. I seal the input of flowering with the galactic tone of integrity. I am guided by the power of elegance. And we are still in this wave spell. The theme of the earth, synchronicity, navigation. So now we're planting the seeds along the way and watching them grow. 
Solar wind 437.7 kilometers per second. Planetary K index quiet at the moment. Could get as high as 3 over the next 24 hours. Interesting looking image of the sun here. It's evening of May 26. Michelle stood on a beach near Fort Bragg looking over Pacific as the sun set. Something strange. This was just the beginning. Okay, so they're saying this is an atmospheric event. Let's just imagine, if we will, we hear this talk about Nibiru and this other planet. You know, is it possible in the realm of possibility that this could be something else that is being seen? Maybe a bit closer than we realize? I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. And then, of course, you get the ocean, and look how nice and straight this is. We don't see a curvature. Just pointing that out. Coronal hole on the left side of the sun here, making its way towards the middle, where we'll be feeling the effect from that. Okay. And then uh, M-class flare possibilities at 1%. X-class is at 1%. Geomagnetic storm activity, 10% in the middle latitudes, upper latitudes, about 20%. So we're stability, stable in those areas there. Here, just to point out here while I'm here, I know you might look at this and say, well, there's a curvature right here. Well, not really. There is, but this could be a couple things. It could be a fisheye lens that could be on here, distorting that, or... Imagine if you have a a coin and you have the coin set on the table. And when you look at the coin and you stand up and you look at it at, at the same level as the table, you're going to see a completely flat surface. And as you rise up, you're going to be able to see the outside edge of the disk, perhaps, or just you know what appears to be the edge of that that's going to be roundish in nature doesn't mean you're seeing a sphere you might be seeing the flat plane off in the distance here and now you've got this curve because this might be the curve around the edge but I'd have to say that this is a little bit more this looks like more of a fish eye lens type situation going on here because the world's a lot bigger than we realize and you can't just go up this height and then see everything that they're there you know so, it's my thoughts on that. All right, up in the sky tonight. As darkness, let's see, is your sky dark enough you can see the Coma Borensis star cluster naked eye? As soon as twilight is completely over, look above Jupiter, about 25 degrees, two and a half fist at arm's length. The cluster is dim but big, at least five degrees wide, the size of a golf ball at arm's length. Its brightest stars near its middle form a sort of inverted Y shape. Binoculars bring its stars right out. All right, so there you go. That's our opening. That's our cosmic weather. I'll be back right now. We're going to UFO News. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. All right, Dirk, thank you very much. Today, I've got four stories for you. Story number one, UFO disc recorded by drone over Palatine, Illinois, May 19th. I really like this photo sent to us at UFO Sightings Daily. It appears it was taken from a drone with the camera and it recorded a disc of in the distance. The UFO is definitely a disc and seems to blend in with the color of the cloudy overcast sky. It was going gone in two minutes as the eyewitness describes and we know it's not a cloud. This is a great catch by one of our readers. Okay, good picture. The, re the eyewitness says after reviewing photos taken from the evening, I zoomed in, can't decide what the object floating in the night sky in the right side just above the horizon was. It does not appear to be a plane, and a photo taken within two minutes after shows nothing floating or flying in the sky. I'm zooming in, it appears to be disc-shaped and have lights. All right. 
Very cool. Next. UFO caught over San Antonio, Texas, May 30th. Got this purplish looking object. First thing we want to ask ourselves, is this a lens flare? And so we're going to look to see, do we have any light source around here where this might be coming off of? Nothing that's in view of the camera. And it isn't really the kind, straight circular kind. Sometimes those flares, they look very circular. This is the most common way to catch a UFO, to sit a camcorder out and let it record for a few hours, then go through the footage. See if you got lucky. It's hard and it's a lot of time. But when you catch one, it feels great. I've done this before, but will often take days to catch something. Then many hours of going over video just to check it out. This is at, uh, San Antonio UFO Texas of YouTube. S-A-U-F-O-T-X. He said uh, May 30th. The pulsating UFO was captured materializing over the skies of San Antonio, Texas. Using a sky fishing technique. Sky fishing technique is which involves setting a camera on a fixed point of a reference and then just let it roll. The camera was recording for 15 minutes at one point a UFO materializing over the skies of San Antonio. You see it come into view in a controlled manner. This orb was captured only for a couple of seconds as it slowly faded away. Alright, very cool. So sky fishing, just setting up a camera and seeing if you catch anything. Alright, this takes us back to a crop circle from years ago. A very popular one called the Chibolton Crop Circle. You might recall this one, the very intricate design that was there. People were flocking near Chibolton Radio Telescope in Hampshire, the UK, on Tuesday, August 2001, to see two crop formations featuring a large number of small pixels. Both looked very impressive, especially the view from above. One formed a human face, the other represented a radio transmission. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI, sent from the Arecibo Radio Telescope in 1974. According to the witness, the Arecibo Formation was created August 20th. The two formations were 200 meters apart in the same field. The interpretation of the human face came from researcher and writer Wayne Herschel. In his analysis, the face looks like an Egyptian sphinx and viracocha. However, the Mars face could be the most thought-provoking remblance. The Arecibo in the north coast of Puerto Rico contains a natural disc-shaped hole in a rock. Inside the bowl is a 100 feet diameter radio telescope, the largest one in the world. Some modifications performed to the transmitter in 1974, allowing it to broadcast up to 20 terawatts. SETI decided to transmit an encoded message to the heavens as the inaugural test of those modifications or improvements. The signal was directed to the globular star, cl globular star cluster. M13 estimated to be 25,000 light years away and constituted 30, 300,000 stars in the constellation of Hercules. Transmitted November 16, 1974, the message consisted of 1,679 pulses of binary code, which are a series of O's and 1's, 1's and zeros, which need to only a little under 3 minutes to transmit at 2,380 2, megahertz. The reason for the 1,679 is down to mathematics. The number is a unique product of two prime numbers, 23 and 73. And people behind the decision of the number assume that any life form with enough intellect would look for unique universal constructs such as binary digits, chemical element frequencies, and prime numbers. Only the prime numbers 23 and 73 produce 1,679 when multiplied together, so there can only be one way to arrange the signal if converted to a matrix 23 squares by 73 squares. When it was decoded, here's what it says. Beware the bearers of false gifts and their broken promises. Much pain, but still time. Believe there is good out there. We oppose deception. Conduit closing, 0 times 0, 07. 
All right, the zero times zero seven is a binary code that means a bell sound or the sound of an old typewriter. All right, so you can check that out, see what you think. Does this apply to something that's about to go on now? Perhaps it does. Perhaps it does. But it certainly talks. Beware the bears of false gifts. It talks and seems to uh, hint at some sort of deception that goes on. Someone bringing gifts. Is this an alien deception? We need to be aware of. It seems to be in the air, the, that idea. Maybe it is. Is UFO disclosure really eminent? It's a different perspective. There have been some talk inside the UFO community that disclosure is on the horizon with Hillary saying that if she wins the election, she'll release the hidden UFO files. Others have said that President Obama has suggested that he'll release these files before the expiration of his term, which would mean that it might come tomorrow or as late as January 27th. To all this, I say nonsense. Why? Because we've heard all this before. Remember Jimmy Carter who had sighted Venus and then thought it was an alien spacecraft? And he thought he would get to the bottom of the UFO troubles. Nothing other came of that. Though there were some interesting times, there have been some strange some suggestions that disclosure was going to happen almost immediately. But in the end, nothing came of it. Bill Clinton said the same thing when he was asked about the Roswell case and said that he hadn't been told about it. It was during the Clinton administration that the Air Force reinvestigated the Roswell case and determined that what fell was just a weather balloon and Rawin radar targets. Didn't matter that the explanation was essentially the same as they had claimed in 1947. It was the answer to the question that seemed to appease many. The point, however, is that the closure was at hand, according to them, and for some reason it never appeared. Skeptics will say it was because there was nothing more to release. Disclosure had happened. When the Project Blue Book files were disclassified in 76, there was nothing in them, and there was spectacular other than evidence that the classified project had been carried out contrary to the various claims of various officials over the years. True believers will tell you that there are and is no disclosure because the secrets being held are too disturbing to be shared by the public or it would disclose secrets about the craft that the governments did not wish revealed for national security reasons. To a point that the General Bolander said that the best cases were not part of the Blue Book system, and others will say that Project Moondust picked up the slack. And now again, once again, we promise disclosure. I don't know why this has become an issue in this election, and while it is not a big issue, the mainstream media is talking about it, many of them seriously. It might be one of those candidates who is, or might be, if the president is looking. What is going on here? Is the president is looking for an issue to divert attention from others, more imperative matters. But there is disclosure discussion about it. But it won't happen for one of two reasons. Either there is nothing left to disclose, or national security will stop it. Personally, given all that we have discussed here, but other blogs and magazine articles, documentaries, and books. All the secrets are out there. Some of them are so wild and others that a few nuts believe them. Really, the reptilians on the moon. And some of them seem truly exciting but do not affect their lives in any way. If we learn tomorrow that alien races have visited Earth, what difference would it make? We'd still have to pay our bills, go to work, to school, do chores, take care of those who need it, and wait somehow impatiently for the next chapter of the Game of Thrones. I would hope that as no one is going to base his or her vote on the candidate who promises disclosure because there are other more imperative issues for the president to worry about. But we have to remember history of disclosure. There isn't one. It is sad that this promise is thrown out there periodically, but even sadder that the people still believe it will happen anytime soon. I predict we'll have full disclosure the day that the alien craft lands to reveal the truth about the alien visitation and not a second before. All right, very good point. You know, disclosure, what is disclosure? Disclosure Disclosure is disclosing that we have information about extraterrestrials. But all it takes is an Internet search or flipping through the television to find out that there are plenty of stories out there. Disclosure has occurred as far as it being a soft disclosure. 
as it being the full disclosure, the big D from the government, that's what people are, are wanting. People want the government to come forth and say, we have information. And then, of course, trusting that the government, who never lies to people, is going to tell you that information, that gets into the next step. But there are those who think disclosure is going to happen. Um, I did a good interview. I'm going to be posting up uh, later today and talking about it tomorrow. But I did a really good interview with Stephen Bassett, Paradigm Research Group, and we talked all about disclosure and some of these uh, events with Obama and with Hillary and, you know, the realities of what may or may not occur. So it was a very good discussion. I think you'll like it. I'll get that posted up later today, and you'll have that available soon enough. All right. All right. Let me jump away for a few moments to check things out here, and I'll be right back. Meantime, wake up. What if our government was responsible for some of the greatest crimes against this nation? Would you really want to know? These are big questions, but these questions deserve answers. It's time to demand the truth. Continuing on, a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world, interesting things. You know, we've got the story of the large gorilla, Hammurabi, I believe is his name, that was killed. Very sad situation all around. Sad that uh, the child was able to get down into the animal enclosure. Sad that the mother wasn't able to watch the child a little bit better. Sad that the gorilla had to be killed. Sad that people didn't have better observational skills because when we watch the video now and, and experts are looking at it, they're realizing that the animal itself was going to protect the child. Yes, when it dragged it through the water, it seemed a bit harsh. 
Um, but after that, the child was sitting there and wasn't being hurt and was reaching up, and there was a communication that was taking place there of some sorts. It's too bad that the humans, the adults, couldn't look at that situation a little bit clearer for what was going on rather than just have that instinct of have to destroy the animal right away. Something might have happened because, you know, animals don't necessarily have that same instinct that humans have to want to kill everything. There is a bit of a protective nature, and we did see some of that. So hopefully the situation will get revol resolved to some degree or another. I don't know how an animal is dead, and the family, the parents, are under investigation for this. Hear that the mother herself is a a preschool teacher, which is in itself kind of kind of scary, being that this mother couldn't even watch her own child. I mean, what would have happened if she would have had a whole classroom of children with her at that day? So that in itself needs to be uh, handled a little bit better. So when I look at what's going on in the world. As you are looking at the world, we're seeing a lot of a lot of anger, a lot of people confused. We have talks about racism, unlike any other time that I remember in life. I thought that the issue of racism had calmed down, and then we have all these young people who are just bringing it back up again, and you know, acting as if this is something that is a new thing that's been occurring in their lives and we've got the gender issues that are going on and people don't know you know how to deal with that and then you have people who are in the midst of it which are pushing agendas and so you don't know what's real and what's the agenda that's being pushed on and on and on we have all of these issues going on and then we have projects like CERN taking place and and when we look at this it's like how are all of these things happening what is the cause of these? Why do we seem to be repeating similar cycles that we keep repeating over and over? And I have one word for you, and that word is reincarnation. Reincarnation, and with this I hope to throw a monkey wrench into the whole mishmash of what's going on. Because reincarnation is the philosophical or religious concept that a living being can begin a new life at a different body after biological death. This is also called rebirth or transmigration, and that is the part of samsara doctrine of psychic existence. It is a major tenet of all Indian religions, namely Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, and Sikhism. The idea of reincarnation is found in many ancient cultures with a belief in rebirth that was held by such figures as Pythagoras, Plato, and Socrates. It is also a common belief in various ancient and modern religions such as Spiritism, Theosophy, and Echinar, and it is well found in many tribal societies around the world in places such as Australia, East Asia, Siberia, and South America. Although the majority of sects of the Abrahamic religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam do not believe that individuals reincarnate, particular groups within these religions do refer to reincarnation. These groups include the mainstream historical and contemporary followers of Kabbalah, the Cathars, Alarites, the Druze, and the Rosicrucians. The historical relations between these sects and beliefs about reincarnation that were characteristics of Neoplatonism Orphanism, Hermeticism, Manchurianism, and Gnosticism of the Roman era, as well as the Indian religions, have been subject to recent scholarly research. In recent decades, many Europeans and North Americans have developed interest in reincarnation. Contemporary films, books, and popular songs frequently mention reincarnation. All right, more to the article. Um, I'm going to leave it for you here. It says, uh, the word... Reincarnation derives from Latin meaning entering the flesh again. Okay, so one of the things that it talks about, it says, though the majority of Abrahamic religions do not believe that individuals reincarnate, we're going to have a thought right there. You see, Jesus talked about reincarnation. So when I hear that Christians don't believe in reincarnation, I have to ask if they've actually read the Bible 
and if they've actually read the words of Jesus, because if they read the words, they understand that Jesus was talking about reincarnation. If you're ready to believe that, then you will understand that John the Baptist is Elijah come again. Pretty straightforward, but if you want to turn a blind eye to that and pretend that doesn't occur, you can do that. But then again, you'd be turning a blind eye to the truth. Here's an article over at Crystal Links. Reincarnation is a consciousness experiment set in linear time to experience emotions. Within the matrix, its design of all things happens simultaneously, hence there's no past, present, or future. The multidimensional experiences souls have simultaneously. To have fast life through regression is to see and experience your soul as having in another reality that perhaps affects the outcomes of what it is doing here. As a hypnotherapist, people have past life regressions to make sense of their current life and to heal their issues. The goal of any past life regression, as unique as an individual person evolved, rather than something as part of their collective memory, is to physically verify the information given. In a series of books, Medium Jane Roberts channeled the entity named Seth on the topic of reincarnation. Seth believes that each time and space are basically illusions. Consistent with his view, Seth argues that the only parts of each person's soul incarnate in specific reality as man is a multidimensional entity, simultaneously experiencing many contexts. Many books, documentaries, and films have been created dealing with reincarnation, allowing the average person to believe that we have more than one life, one experience, and there is more out there than just physical reality. Okay, so it's a nice, good, lengthy article here all about it. Children are very interesting when it comes to reincarnation. You know, you can talk to a child, and children have memories more of what occurred to them prior to when they came into this physical reality until a certain age when, you know, they've heard enough stuff from the parents and people around them that they start forgetting about that. But if you ever have an opportunity, you know, if you're sitting with a, a child and you have an opportunity to ask them what they remember before they came into this body, you might find some fascinating information, things they might tell you, experiences of, of where they were, who they were with, you know, what it was like there why they chose to come down into this particular body. Find some very fascinating answers that I think might surprise you. So if you have kids or if you your friends have kids or you know, you're you're around kids and you have an opportunity just to, to ask them some of those questions, you know, you might be surprised. Kids are definitely connected in to understanding a bit more of where they came from. And we lose that ability as we grow up because all of the events of life don't really encourage us to remember that until we get to a point where we're going to start to study it and then we remember something that we actually knew way back when. If we could just continue to keep those those kids when they come into life remembering such things and continue to encourage that, imagine where we might go in life. Imagine what we might be capable of if we, instead of stifling that information that comes in, if we encourage that and brought that information a little bit more to light. Here's an article. It says, Reincarnation, Its Meaning and Consequence by Ernest Vallea. The concept of reincarnation seems to offer one of the most attractive explanations of humanity's origin and destiny. It is accepted not only by adherents of Eastern religions or New Age spirituality, but also by many who don't share such esoteric interests and convictions. To know that you lived many lives before this one and there are many more to come in a very attractive perspective from which to judge the meaning of life. On one hand, reincarnation is a source of great comfort, especially for those who seek liberation on the exclusive basis of their inner resources. It gives assurance for continuing one's existence in further lives and thus having a renewed chance to attain liberation. On the other hand, reincarnation is a ray of a way of rejecting the monotheistic teaching of the final judgment by a holy God at the possible result of being eternal, condemned to suffer hell. Another major reason for accepting reincarnation is that it seems to explain the difference that exists among people. 
Okay, and so then we get into discussions of world religions. I'm just going to leave this all to you because there's a lot to read. Here's um, some examples, claims of physical evidence for reincarnation, some interesting ones. Transferred birthmarks in part of Asia. Tradition dictates when a person dies, relatives will mark his or her body, often using soot with the hopes that the soul of the deceased will be reincarnated with the same family. The mark is said to be both a birthmark and evidence that the soul has been reborn. Uh, here nine. Ian Stevenson was a psych psychiatry professor from the University of Virginia who focused on reincarnation. In 1993, he published a paper in the journal of Scientific Exploration telling birthmarks and birth defects seemingly linked to past life memories. According to his findings, the majority of birth defects are thought to be formed by unknown causes. In one case in Turkey, Remembered the life of a man who was killed by a shotgun. Hospital records told of a man who had died after six days of injuries caused by a blast to the right side of his skull. The boy in question was born with utilateral microtia, a malformed ear, and a hernifactural muscroma, which is the underdevelopment of the right side of his face. Okay. A patient who was killed and married her son. Ryan Weiss, the chairman of the psychiatry department at Mount St. Sinai Medical Center in Miami claims to have been a patient to have seen a patient have a spontaneous past life regression episode during treatment even though he is classically trained physicist and regular practice for many years he is now a leader in past regression therapy in his book messages from the masters tapping into the power of love Dr. Weiss tells the story of a patient named Diane who worked as the head nurse at an urgent care center during a past life regression session, Diane supposedly experienced the life of a young settler in North America during the early years of the conflict with Native Americans. She specifically talked about hiding away from a hunting party with her toddler son in a compartment while her husband was away. She describes the baby as having a birthmark shaped like a half moon or curved sword beneath its right shoulder. While hiding, the son cried out out of fear for their lives in an effort to quiet him. The woman accidentally smothered a child by covering his mouth. Month after the regression experience, Diane felt herself attracted to a patient who had been admitted for asthma attacks. The patient also felt a connection of familiarity with Diane. Diane was shocked when she noticed a crescent-shaped birthmark in the same location on the patient. Dr. Weiss claims to have seen asthma in people whose previous memories involved suffocation, death by suffocation. Uh, handwriting. Sorry, of six-year-old... Uh, Tanajit Sain was living in Aluna, Miami village in India. The boy had been claiming since age of two that his real name was Satnam Sin and that he was born in Chakachekala village in Jalhanda, roughly 60 kilometers away. He recalled that he was a student of class nine and that his father's name was Leet. A man on a scooter had collided with him who was on a bike and he was killed on that day. He said that the book he was carrying the day of the accident were soaked in his blood and he had 30 rupees in his wallet. The child was so insistent, the story was so odd, yet detailed that his father decided to investigate. A teacher in Landahar told Rat that a boy named Septem Sai had really died in an accident and the boy's father's name, Ajit Singh Ranjit, reached out to his family who confirmed the blood-soaked books and rupee details. When Taranjit and members of the Saturn family met face to face, he was able to correctly identify Satnam in the photos. Interesting. Born knowing Swedish. Psychiatry professor Ian Stevenson investigated numerous cases of the phenomena of xenoglossy, which is identified as speaking a real language entirely unknown to the speaker in his ordinary state. Memories of monasteries. In his book, Your Past Lives and the Healing Process, psychiatrist Adrian Finkelstein describes a boy named Robin Hull, who often spoke in a language his mother couldn't understand. She contacted a professor of age and languages who identified the language as a dialect spoken specifically in the northern region of Tibet. Robin said that he went to school many years in a monastery, and that is where he learned to speak that language. However, the truth was that Robin wasn't even of school-going age, and yet had yet to set foot in a classroom. Uh, the burned Japanese soldier. Another Stevenson investigation revolves a Burmese girl named Ma Win Ta, 
Ma Win Tar was born in 62, around the age three. She started re referencing a life as a Japanese soldier who had been captured by Burmese villagers and burned alive, tied to a tree. Uh, his brother Scars, three. 79, Kevin Christensen died at the age of two. A broken leg at 18 months had revealed metatastic cancer. Chemotherapy was administered through the right side of his neck to combat the many ailments brought on by the disease, including a tumor that caused his left eye to protrude and a nodule above his right ear. Twelve years later, his mother, who had divorced his father, remarried, had another child. Right from the start, there were similarities between the half-brothers. Patrick was born with a birthmark that looked like a small cut to the right side of his neck. It was the same place where Kevin's chemo entered his body. Even stranger, it was a molecule on his scalp in the same place that Kevin's had been. A Kevin Patrick had an issue with his left eye and was eventually diagnosed as corneal leukemia. Thankfully, not a tumor. Cat memories. When John McConnell was fatally shot six times in 92, he left behind a daughter named Doreen. Doreen gained birth to a son, William, in 1997. William was diagnosed with pulmonary valvatricia, a congenital condition in which the faulty valve detects blood from the heart and the lungs. The right ventricle was also deformed. His condition improved after numerous surgeries. When he was shot, one of the bullets entered his back. In the day, trying to avoid discipline, he told that you were a little girl and I was your daddy. There were a lot of bad times, and they never hit you. Similar over statements, he asked about the cat that she had as a little girl and mentioned that his name was Boss. Strikingly, only John called the cat that. All right. And in between state, Dr. Brian Weiss became involved with past life regression through many involvement with a patient named Catherine and illustrated in his book, Many Lives, Many Masters. During a regression, Catherine shocked Dr. Weiss when she mentioned that she was in between state that both Dr. Weiss's father and son were present. She went on to say, your father is here and your son, who is a small child. Father says that you will know him because his name is Avron and your daughter's name is named after him. Also, his death was due to his heart. Your son's heart was also important, but it was backward like a chicken's. He wanted to show you that medicine could only go so far and that a scope is limited. All right, so there you go. So interesting stories right there about reincarnation claims. Uh, here is a piece that talks about Edgar Casey, who did many predictions as we know about. And here he talked about Jesus, about the Christ, and the various times that he was reincarnated. So according to Casey, here's a list of incarnations. First was Amelius, first expression of divine mind, the Logos, the Christ soul before his incarnation into a physical body. He was the entity Case identified as living in the lost civilization of Atlantis, who redirected the process of human evolution by creating a more appropriate physical form for the influx of souls to incarnate into, rather than incarnating to ape-like human form, which souls had entangled themselves in. Uh, Adam, Enoch, Hermes, Melchizedek, Joseph, son of Jacob, Joshua, warrior, Asaph, uh, and Yeshua, high priest who helped organize and return from exile and rebuilding of the temple, Zend, Jesus, and then we're Wherever he's going to be, will be. All right, so Yeshua has apparently been around. Um, it's a couple of videos here. I'm not going to play these. I'm just going to leave them for you. One is called uh, Proof of Reincarnation, Five Stories That Will Blow Your Mind. And here's another one, Evidence of Reincarnation. So you can check these out. Plenty more. Do, do a Google search and you'll find plenty. Go to YouTube and do a search of reincarnation and you'll find a lot of things and it's really fascinating just to go through and listen to the stories of what people remember. You know, I personally have had memories of a number of lifetimes. Uh, friends have had similar situations. I've been to past life regressions around people who are you know, talking about and remembering things. Very fascinating subject. Point I want to make about all of this is this. Just because we are in the body we're in right now doesn't mean we are in the same body 
in a past time. So people who are white may have been black. People who are black may have been white. People who are brown may have been black or white or all of the above. You see, we've all changed. We've all been black. We've all been white. We've all been brown. We've all been red. We've all been yellow. We've been all of the various colors. We've probably been a variety of the different genders, male and female. We've probably done all sorts of different experiences in order to understand life a little bit more. So when we have a situation and we have, for example, members of Black Lives Matter clamoring about all the problems, it makes me laugh because chances are those same members of Black Lives Matter were probably white folks during the time when they are complaining about. Matter of fact, I think probably a lot of black folks were probably white during the time of slavery. Might have been slave lords, slave masters, and now they're back here to see things from the other side of the fence. Maybe that's been going on a long while. Maybe, you know, the Slavs. Slavery is named after the Slavs. They were enslaved for hundreds of years over there in Europe. Maybe, you know, they then reincarnated into others and they kept the process going and maybe that's what we do. Maybe we don't know any better because we come back and and we get into these messes. So when I hear folks talking so passionately about my ancestors went through this, yeah, your ancestors, and chances are you're probably not the same color as they were. You're probably a different color than what you are now. And so maybe you should learn about what lesson is going on inside of you rather than the silly lessons that we're doing and 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 challenging ourselves with that are all about on the outside. You know, we get ourselves all goofed up and, you know, having the righteousness of my color, my skin color is the best. Even though in another lifetime I was a different skin color, now I am this one and mine is the best. And forget about that one because that one's not there and I don't believe in those sort of reincarnation things anyway. You know, it's silly. It's silly. We get into this and, and if we just understood, we might not be picking on each other because we might have more compassion realizing that the blacks who are complaining about slavery might have been the slave lords back then. The whites who are complaining about problems might have been blacks in another time or Hispanics in another time or Asians in another time. We've all switched around. We've all been the various different choices available so that we can see things from different perspectives. So that the fact that we're stuck is simply because people are not choosing to go into their memory banks. Because if you go into your memory banks and you realize that you were in that skin another time, you might not be causing the same amount of problems you're causing. You might have a bit more respect for other people, understanding that this color of their skin doesn't make a difference. The color of their skin is just the particular suit one is wearing, the clothes one is wearing. And we'd honor and we look at each other a little bit differently. Instead of trying to kill each other for the different colors of skin we have or fight with each other because of the different gender ideas of who should be first and who should be second. And, you know, it's very silly the things we get ourselves in. And yet if we would just remember history, and that's what it seems to all boil down to, our problems. We don't remember. We re don't remember our past. Therefore, we're doomed to repeat the failures of it. Because we don't look at the mistakes we've made so that we can correct them. And if we could just do that, we might not have any more racist issues. Because we'd have more compassion with each other, realizing that, oh yeah, we've been in their shoes before. We might not have the various issues with all of these gender because we'd understand a little bit more and have compassion with each other. We might be able to actually figure out problems and might not even have issues of of insanity and mental issues going on in the world because some of these issues probably are connected to past lives and remembering other lifetimes. So if we could really just look at this issue of reincarnation, we might be able to solve a lot of things. Mental issues, racism, and gender issues. Right there, there's three issues that we could probably resolve if we just understood 
that we're all here and we're all going through the experiences to learn as much as we can about all the different species and all the different groups because we're part of all of these we're connected to all of them and that's the part that we're missing so hopefully we'll get it hopefully we will but I think that's a very big one so when you hear people out there clamoring about their ancestors just remind them that during the time when their ancestors were alive chances are that they were not even the same color of the ancestors they're arguing about so figure out who and what they were about maybe learn something about themselves you know what I'm saying all right here's an article over at N5D six signs you found your path in life actually this is by Anna the mind of learning mind Sign finding one's path of life is not an easy task it takes years of trying failing searching it's sad that most people never find the right path and end up spreading their life surrounded by the wrong people and doing things they don't enjoy. In today's society, it's particularly easy to get confused as to what we want in life since we are constantly told by the mass media and mainstream culture that what we should be like and what we should do and how we should look. Still, there are individuals who don't conform to what the majority wants and listen to the voice of their own soul. Are you one of these people? To find out, here are some signs to indicate you have found your path in life. All right, I'm just going to read them, uh, the headlines. One, you make a living doing what you love. Two, you strive for value-based goals and appreciate the things that matter. Three, you feel like everything is in its place and are content with your life. Four, you're in a healthy relationship or a happy alone. Five, you have cut people out of your life. Six, you realize that other people's opinions mean nothing. Okay. Very interesting. So, you know, we can find out what we want in life. We can find out if we're on the right path. Those are all good ways of checking it out to help understand a little bit more. All right, here's a message. This is from the Pleiadian High Council of Seven. I chose this one today. It's called Exploring Multiple Timelines. The other day I did a piece, last week I did a piece on the Mandela Effect, talking about timelines. Maybe this is something we should be understanding more about. Here's our opportunity. Multiple Timelines, the Pleiadian High Council of Seven, channeled by Daniel Scranton. We are the Pleiadian High Council of Seven and we are pleased to offer you our words of wisdom. Have you ever thought about something that you did not then follow through with in any action journey? Have you ever wondered about that possibility, if you would have followed through with an action upon it? This is what you are stepping into now as conscious creators. You are going to find yourselves with opportunities for exploring different avenues, different timelines, different probable realities. And when you do, you will actually send a portion of your consciousness down that particular route. You will then gain the knowledge that you would have obtained from taking the action journey, and you will bring it back to yourself in the present moment without having taken a single action at all. This is, in a sense, how you will begin to explore time travel, and also how you will begin to bilocate and multilocate. Some of you do this already, consciously others do it subconsciously, but what we are telling you now that it will be a skill that you will perfect in the same way that you have perfected other skills in your lives up until this point. It will be very similar to learning how to do something like play an instrument or drive a car, and it's no more complicated than either of those things. Your ability to navigate backwards and forwards down these various timelines is one that you are activating and it is one that you have been activating for quite some time. Now, the purpose of any exploration is to gain insight so that you may make better decisions for yourselves. But in this case, you don't have to make a decision to move in any particular direction at all. You can simply gain the insight from moving your consciousness down a particular timeline, and you don't have to do anything about it. You will enjoy the experience. You will enjoy having the insight for when you are ready to take some future action, 
and sometimes you will not even want to utilize this skill because it is very interesting and fun for all of you to be surprised. But you will enjoy having a tool like this at your disposal, and you will create new experiences that could not be had otherwise. You may wish to begin practicing now, stretching your ability to do this, because as we have said it is something that is available to you now. And it is a skill that you will spend quite a bit of your time learning to master. We are the Pleiadian High Council of Seven, and we are very fond of all of you. That is all. Alright, good message. Something is going on with timelines. Being aware of what they are. Being aware of something happening. You know, we might not know exactly what's going on with the timelines, but we can certainly be aware that something is happening, and that's half the battle. Alright, close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Take another breath. Exhale again. And again. And feel this breath moving through all the cells of your body. And feel each cell becoming alive with life. Feel the energy centers of your body being activated or continuing to be activated. Feel the energy at the bottom of the spine, the red color chakra drawing the energy from the earth and then bringing the up the earth energy up higher from that root chakra to the chakra above it where the energy becomes yellow. And then see the energy moving up higher yet to the solar plexus. So it goes from the orange second chakra to the third chakra, yellow in color, up to the heart, which is green, to the throat, which is blue, the third eye, which is indigo, and finally to the crown chakra, which is violet, and the light continues on into the cosmos. So feel yourself connected to the earth and to spirit. Feel that connection between these two realms coming together. And there you are. Here we are. So just imagine us all here now on this earth. And imagine us all having an opportunity to move forward by simply remembering the past. And so as we go forth this day, let's just put forth this hopeful intention that we are all able to look at our lives and understand that they are bigger than this one particular moment, that our lives are many, many moments all wrapped in one, and that as we explore and experience more of this reality that flows through us, we understand more of the reality that flows through all things. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, we thank you for the blessings of this day. We thank you for the blessings of the Christ light that shines bright in all of our lives. May we find the strength and the courage to remove the distractions and the darkness that blocks its light from shining ever brighter. And may we this day be an example of your blessings by simply sharing this positivity into the world that has been shared with us. So let's imagine ourselves moving through the world, walking through the world, just sending out these positive vibrations of love, health, abundance, peace, and let's just share these energies as we go into the world, and let's bring our conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three, three coming back to the present moment filled with confidence, two coming back to the present moment filled with faith, and one coming back to the present moment happy, healthy, and whole, happy, healthy, and whole. Take another deep breath, exhale, and open your eyes.
That's it, my friends. That is it for today. Thank you very much for being here. Tomorrow I'll uh, be talking about the interview I did with Stephen Bassett. I'll get that all situated and uploaded online tonight so you can check that out. I think you'll enjoy that. In the meantime, have a good day. Just keep your eyes open, paying attention to what's around you. And that's the best that we can do. Because by paying attention, then we can make better choices. And the better choices will mean that We'll have better opportunities. Remember, cause and effect. So the things we do cause or affect something else to happen. More information means better choices. Better choices means better cause, better effects. It's real simple. All right, enjoy your day. I'll be back tomorrow. I love you. Keep loving each other, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace. I'm out of here.